may peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your loved ones in this blessed Sunday. This is Sister Daisy for today's Gospel Power. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. My dear brothers and sisters, the experts of the law certainly know that Moses cautioned against adding anything to what God has commanded. But their insistence on purity laws, which are merely human traditions, could have been politically motivated. In the context of the oppressive Roman rule, the purity laws define the boundary that distinguishes and sets apart God's holy people from the Gentiles who are unclean and ungodly. In this light, the response of Jesus may be understood as a reaction to this Jewish sense of superiority that has no real basis, because all, whether Jews or Gentiles, are sinners. It is an illusion to believe that external cleanliness through observance of purity laws can resolve the problem of internal corruption. The real function of purity laws is to direct one's attention to that deep-seated longing for purity which cannot be attained by one's personal effort but only by relying on God's grace. And this grace has now come in the person of Jesus which the second reading describes as the implanted word that has the power to save souls. Let us pray, Lord Jesus, you are God's answer to our yearning for purity. Create a clean heart in us. Amen. We are here to provide a new way of communicating and proclaiming the gospel.